The problem is he objectively has not been using the keys correctly. And this is the main problem that everybody has right now. He has not been using the keys objectively. And today we're going to go ahead and look right now. We're going to share on my screen. If you guys could see um, what I'm looking at here, we are looking at the 13 keys tracker. And pretty much right now, a lot of these keys, depending on the analyses, have been kind of tilting a certain way. And so right now, based out of my analysis, I mean, midterm games after the midterm elections, the incumbent party holds more seats in the U.S. House of Representatives than the previous midterm. The Republicans gained, so that would be certainly false. So the way this works is that if there are six or more false keys, then Donald Trump wins. If there are eight or more keys that are true, then Kamala Harris wins. That's how this kind of goes. No primary contest. This is the funny part. Allen has this true, but this is where the dishonesty kind of gets a little weird. Kamala Harris didn't even have a legitimate primary contest. It's just the truth. Didn't have a legitimate primary contest. She had a coronation, not a nomination. They kicked out Biden because he was not going to be able to win that race. And they kicked him out out of convenience. And the delegates picked Harris, not the people. And you could even argue that Biden really rigged his own primary in some ways by not letting RFK into some states and changing the order of the primaries. And so that was also really ineffective as well for, you know, Joe Biden. And so you could even argue that no primary contest is false. It's just objectively true because they basically installed the candidate. And at that point, that basically negates the primary key. Incumbent seeking re-election, that's false. No third party is technically true now because there's not going to be a candidate to get over 5%, really. But you have the problem with RFK endorsing Donald Trump. And so technically, some of those third party candidates are still there. Those third party voters are still there, but they're voting for Donald Trump. So this one's a little bit subjective, but for the sake of the keys, I'm going to put them true. Short term economy and strong long term economy. Here's the problem with these. He goes off of the GDP and the GDP is based on job growth and many metrics that we look at. But here's the problem. They just revised down like 18 815,000 jobs. Like, to be honest, that's not good because it's like the GDP may not even be a useful metric to even go off of. And in 1992, he actually used polling data to influence the keys for the economy because, oh, a majority of Americans perceive the economy to not be well. But the issue with that is now that you have polling data where voters are not, they're not satisfied with the economy, but he won't use the polling data now. So it's like, that's kind of weird. Looking at, you know, these, I would put both of those false. I mean, I would put both of those false. That already puts Donald Trump at five false keys. So he's almost winning just me doing the keys. Major policy change, you could technically put this true, except it's not really supposed to benefit the incumbent because looking in the way I would kind of do this is looking at the, what can I say? Looking at the kind of trajectory that the keys were on in a way, that, that was also really a big issue too, is if you look at, for example, like the, the right direction of the nation, wrong track, right track uh, meter. It was looking better at the beginning of Biden's term than it is now. So objectively, whatever policy change was made really should be hurting the incumbent party. No social unrest. I mean, we had an a former president almost be assassinated. The Israel Hamas protester going on. We have a, uh, a, shoot, a school shooting epidemic. We just had a new shooting in Atlanta today. 
we, there's so much stuff going on in the country that I almost feel like this should always be false. And Trump is already winning by me doing the keys. No scandal. This one's sort of subjective, too, because technically Biden hasn't had an impeachment or anything filed. Again, this is me trying to do these as humanly unbiased as possible. Technically, the Hunter Biden stuff does not stick to Biden because it has to pertain to the incumbent president himself. However, you could technically say that the media covering up for Biden's mental unwellness during the presidency is a scandal for Biden. And the fact that Biden hid that from the public. So there's a kind of a wiggle room to play around with it. I may like leave it undecided because it's really objective, but the media did cover up his mental wellness. And this is a point that Trump is really going to hammer Harrison in the debate. It's going to be a big problem. Looking at no military foreign failure, I mean, that's certainly false. And major foreign military success, that's false. I mean, you had a, the Afghanistan pullout, which objectively he said wasn't even a problem. It wasn't a failure, really? So 13 American soldiers dying and a botched operation of leaving millions of dollars worth of equipment for the Taliban to use is not a failure, really? And they haven't came to any peace deals in Israel, Hamas, or Ukraine and Russia. So there is no military. There is military failure and there is no military success. The foreign policy has actually been one of the worst aspects of the administration. And looking at charismatic incumbent, I mean, Biden is not even running, but he's got no income and he's got no charisma. And an uncharismatic challenger, this one is interesting because technically Obama in 2008 and Reagan were the only ones to have gotten this. And it's basically his benchmark is they need to be polling I think it's above like 60%. So just to give this one to Alan, I would say, okay, yeah. If you're going to use 60% as a benchmark, that's pretty straightforward. Donald Trump does have charismatic, you know, traits, but is he really a charismatic challenger? According to the definition, not necessarily. Even if you were to get rid of no primary contest, no social unrest, you know, even if you got rid of those keys, and even if you unchecked the strong short-term economy keys, some of those more subjective ones, Donald Trump still is, is winning. He still wins. And even if you were to uncheck the strong long-term economy key, all these keys that he I have filled in right now, these are what Alan has them at. That's where Alan has them at. There are five keys that you could kind of play around with. The problem is Alan has all of these true. He has all of these true and has Harris winning. His prediction will more than likely have Harris winning. I'm here to tell you, don't use Twitter that day. Don't pay attention to what he's got to say. If a forecaster changes their prediction because of what Alan has, don't take them as legitimate. It is going to be a propaganda tool to be used against everybody to convince everybody that Trump can win the election. It's going to become a problem and they're going to use it to demoralize people. This year, he is not being a honest actor. He's being a bad faith actor this year. They have been promoting him ever since Biden's failed debate performance, only because Biden did so bad that they had to bring around the only cope that they basically could have had. Like, it's not a surprise. And so looking at this, it is really bad for Harris because even with the keys filled in, Trump is already at five false keys. I mean, one key goes red, which could be no social unrest, and Trump's the winner. And that's the one that more than likely Allen would probably have go. I think Allen's probably going to put true for everything else. So more than likely, he's going to have no primary contest. He's going to put strong and short term. He's going to put these true. He's he's blindsided. He's using the GDP, even though technically that's not the right thing to do. And no scandal. He's, he's going to put it true. 
So, and even these, he's like a little bit iffy on these, but I think he may put these false. And so really the whole thing hinges on no social unrest. And he has kind of gone back and forth on this one. So the entire key set basically depends on key eight, which is no social unrest. And he said, oh, we're going to wait till the DNC to see if there's protest. And there was literally the crowd outside in the beginning of the day for the protest was bigger than the crowd inside the DNC. And I don't know if he's going to use that as a metric or not, but it's very clear to me that, I mean, even objectively in general, there is social unrest in this country. There is like, it's just, a f it's basically almost universally agreed upon. I mean, 75% of Americans think we're headed in the wrong direction. So it's like, you can't really put no social unrest. It's almost kind of dishonest to not put that. So even using the keys his way, the only one that could really go either way based on his categorizations is no social unrest. So Donald Trump could technically still win in his keys coming up pretty soon. And he's kind of been throwing around these ad hominem attacks to Donald Trump in a way like he's been throwing stuff around now. And the reason why he's doing that is because I have a feeling he's not 100% certain about his keys. I think that may be it. And if we go to his uh, Twitter feed, we'll see very quickly that he is kind of in a bad spot right now when it comes to looking at some of this stuff. I mean, right now, he was completely just freaking out on Twitter. Uh, I wonder if he still has it up. I do not think he has it up. Or I, I don't know who posted it. I think it's on Rich's account. Let me go to Rich Barris and see if he uh, has the Alan Lickman post up still. Here it is. So Alan Lickman said, and keep in mind, he hasn't even made his prediction yet. Alan Lickman, if Trump wins, take him seriously. He's going to put his policies that he promised into effect. He has nothing to lose. He's immune. Democrats can't do anything to him. And it's so funny, but... It's like this is the most biased he's ever been in the lead up to a prediction. This is the most biased he's ever been in the lead up to a prediction. And so it's like, really? Like, is he really going to be a, a, a decently fa faithful actor this year? Probably not. They've been promoting him quite a bit ever since the debate with Biden. That's when he started popping out out of nowhere. That's when he started popping up again. And so it's like, mm, I don't know. It's it's a little fishy. I mean, we'll see what happens when he drops his prediction. I'd advise you either way, even if he has Trump winning, not to take it literally. Because if he does have Trump winning, he would have been the luckiest man ever. And that literally would only be because he decides to put the no social unrest key uh, false. 